everybody, welcome back. Tanner Garcia here with my very first Lightroom tutorial. Uh, today I want to go ahead and jump into the very basics of Lightroom. Lightroom is an Adobe software for photos. Um, very strong, yet very user-friendly, very intuitive. And so I just want to show you what my workflow is um, on a very minimal scale. I hope that after you watch this video, you will feel a little bit more confident in getting the images that you've just shot, getting them up onto your computer, opening them in Lightroom, making some small adjustments, which can make a big difference on how it is that you actually process your images digitally, and then how it's going to be to save them so you can keep them separated from everything else. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Um, First, I'm going to open up Lightroom, which I already have open here and I'm in my libraries tab. What I'll do here is hit import on the bottom left hand side. And sorry, I got a couple of things running from import. It'll show on the left hand side source. So I'm going to go to my hard drive, my external hard drive, scroll down, find, and I'm going to pull up Vanessa Sherry. She's the one who I called to help me out with this video. Uh, very fun and easy to work with uh, great person so I highly recommend showing her some love and following her on Instagram so the way that I save my photos is I'll make a folder for the person and then I'll make a folder for the date and then I'll make a folder for the raw edits so that's what we're gonna be going after all right so after you import your images it's gonna bring you to your library tab your library will show you your navigator the image that you're selected on it'll show you all the images that you have imported and you'll see a library of thumbnails here at the bottom. So at this point, I'll go ahead and hit develop and that's where you can actually start editing. As you can see, I already have a little bit of history here because I was messing with the images a little while ago. But the first thing I like to do is start going through my images and narrow it down to what images I'm actually going to be working on. And so I do this uh, with two different steps or you can, and you can do it however it is it suits you best. But so if I just hit my arrow key to the left or right, depending on which I'm going, I'll find the first image I want to work on. Um, I like this one. So from here, if I want to flag this one next to the number of the image that you're on, number four in this instance, there's a little flag icon. It's kind of hard to tell if I, come over one image you can see the little white speck there or i can let me go and uncheck that the other thing i can do that makes it easier for me is i use the hot key the letter p on my keyboard hit the letter p and it flags it if you want to unflag something you hit the letter u for unflag and it removes the flag keep going through find a couple more images that i want to play with today and hit p for flag i like that one and Last but not least, I'll go with this one right here. All right, so now that I have the ones that I wanna work on for, for this moment, if I come down to my filter, which is gonna be on the bottom right-hand side, toolbar above your thumbnails, I can click the little flag icon, and what that does is it will remove all the photos that don't have flags and only leave me with the photos that I do have flagged. That's a great way to narrow it down so you don't feel overwhelmed with how many photos you have that, you, that you're gonna be working on. The next section to narrow this down a little bit more, you have a star option. So our star, by hitting the numbers on your keyboard, zero for zero stars, one, two, three, four, and five will take you back to five stars. Um, you can star your images. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna five star everything. So for sure, I want to work with that one. I really like that one, so I'll five star that one. And I'll just go with this one right here. So we'll five star that image as well. And at this point, if I hit this, the, if I select on the fifth star, it'll remove anything that doesn't have five stars and then leave me with the final three photos that I'm going to be editing. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command A or Control A on a PC and select all. And I will scroll down on the right hand side to the very bottom to my lens correction tab and I will hit enable profile correction. And what that'll do is since I shoot in raw, it can read the metadata of the actual image and it knows that I'm in a, it knows that I'm shooting with a Sigma lens. It knows that it's the Sigma 24 millimeter F14. And so Adobe has a profile for this. And so it's going to automatically correct the photo 
to remove any vignetting or distortion around the edges and uh, and to kind of go from there. It's a good starting point. The next thing that I like to take off is going to be the remove chromatic aberration. And for those of you who don't know chromatic aberration, it's just a fancy term for saying that your lens can't read all the colors that are hidden one point. And what it ends up doing is causing a purplish bluish fringe around an image. You tend to get that a lot in a, an area that is hit hard with highlights. Taking that, I just make sure that I remove any type of aberration from there, from the image before I start working on it. Since I have all of them selected, it's gonna set that profile correction and remove aberration on all the images. Now I'll select my first image by just making sure that that's the only one highlighted. And the first thing I like to do is go to my crop and rotate uh, button here. And it's gonna be under the histogram. And I like to use auto straighten. So if I hit auto, it adjusted at 0 0.02 degrees. So it just straightens out the image however much it feels. Sometimes it doesn't get it right. So if, at that point, if you just hover next to the image, you see your little curved up and down arrows. You can adjust how you want to straighten it. And I'll just hit auto again and take it back to where I was at. And then I oh, see how it cropped it. So let me open up my image again. All right. So now that's on auto. Now, as far as cropping, right here you have a lock and it says original. You can go to, you have a lot of uh, presets that are common. So if you ever print your work, you can select something if you know that you're gonna be printing or you want a five by seven format. Uh, you can select five by seven or one by one and give you a, a square and move the image around where you wanna crop it at. Uh, but if you unlock it, it'll allow you to kind of go crazy into a custom crop but keep in mind that if you try and print this out on any type of medium you may have or you may run into some issues because it's not a standard size format so i'll go ahead and lock that back and go back to original and click off of there to take those grids off now the next thing i'd like to do is under your color tab i'll go to auto and what that does is adobe will read everything on the image and say, hey, we think these adjustments would work great for it. And it's a really great starting point. So it lifts shadows, it lightens your dark spots, it dims your light spots. Um, and then from here, we can go into a little bit farther if I wanna adjust my exposure, if I wanna bring it all the way down, if I wanna bring it all the way up. If at any time you feel that you've messed up, you can just double click on the actual word and it'll take it back to zero. And then from there, I can just hit auto and it'll take it back to where I was at before. And so from here, I'll go ahead and maybe bring my exposure up just a hair and then start messing with my contrast just a little bit. I'll bring down my shadows. I'll bring down my whites. And then I'll bring in my blacks just a little bit. And you got to be careful with your blacks and your shadows. They are two different settings. Uh, but if you go too black, then you're just going to end up getting like a black blob where anything, anything's dark and you're going to lose all types of detail. Uh, and obviously that doesn't look pleasing. So a lot of times a good edit is an image that you look at and you feel maybe isn't edited or isn't highly over processed. And then from there, you also have your HSL, your hue, saturation, and luminance. So obviously you can tell that it's broken down by color. And so, for instance, we have red right here. If I jam my reds all the way up, you can see that the red starts popping out. And if I bring them all the way down, it's going to darken everything. And that's on my luminance side. So if you want certain colors to be a little bit more muted, you can bring down the luminance. And if you want them to pop a little bit more, you can raise the luminance. And then I'll bring that back to zero. Uh, one thing that I like to do is you have a little button right here in your HSL tab. If I click that, wherever I hover my mouse, it'll show me the color that adobe is reading that color on the image at so if this is red and i want to bring my red down i can just slide my mouse wheel up and down make those adjustments there as i feel are needed and one more tip that took me a while to learn but helps out a lot of you shoot indoors and it looks too warm is i you have your white balance here so what i can do is i can make the image overly exaggerated on the cool side and vice versa on the warm side double click my temp and it'll bring it back to your standard 5600 or i can click this little eye drop and find a spot that i want to use as my white balance point 
And by clicking on that, it'll make the adjustment. So I was clicking on something blue and it's gonna adjust to compensate for that and make it very warm. And let's click on something a little bit warmer and you'll see how it'll in turn make everything a little bit cooler. So that just looks a little too cool for school. <laughs> All right, next image. I'll do the same thing. Auto straighten, that looks fair to me. Auto colors. And then I'll bring up my exposure a little bit so that I can bring my other levels down without darkening the image too much, but still giving it a little bit more of a moody feel. Bring my blacks down a little bit. And last one, auto straighten, auto color, exposure, my contrast. Bring down my highlights, bring in my shadows, bring in my whites and my blacks. Now, one thing I can do is whenever you're hovering over the image, it's a uh, magnifying glass. I'll click on it. I can adjust it up here above your or well, inside your navigator navigator tab and I can move it to where I need it. One thing I like to do is whiten teeth in a lot of images that I shoot whenever I'm shooting one on one and I don't have 700,000 million edits to work on. If I come over here, I can click on my adjustment brush or I can hit the letter K and it'll bring up the same thing. And I already have teeth whitening selected. So you can go through whatever it is you wanna make uh, adjustments to individually, teeth whitening for me. If we look at the bottom, you have the size, the feather, the flow, and it's gonna auto mask it. So I can adjust the size of my brush by just scrolling my mouse wheel up and down, but I have a magic mouse on a Mac, so you just slide your finger up and down the middle of the mouse. And at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and hold down and just kind of paint over her teeth. Nothing too crazy or dramatic. Adjust to get into these small areas so I don't make it look odd. And kind of get up a little bit closer around the edges without bleeding over into the lip and then go ahead and hit K to close that. And from this point, I can just click on the image and it'll zoom back out and you can see her teeth are a little bit wider, just makes the image pop a little bit more. Uh, I noticed that there was a small blemish right here. So one thing that Lightroom does offer is some type of healing. So here's a spot removal. I go to heal. Uh, which is different from cloning because cloning will just take an exact image and it, it can look kind of wonky. So I'll go to heal and I'll keep my feathering uh, pretty wide open. And as you can see, it did a really good job of blending in that minor blemish and just kind of smoothing out the skin right there. So if I zoom out, now that's what the image looks like. You can hit the letter Y on your keyboard and it'll split your screen for a before and after. So you can see the left is obviously straight out of camera. The right is going to be my edited subject. And that's going to be about it. Now I'm going to edit these a little bit farther and go into Photoshop also a little bit, mess with my HSL. But that's going to be something that we can do a little bit later if you guys are interested. I will have the pictures posted on my Instagram at Tanner Garcia Photo. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save my images. So I'll just hit Y, get out of there. Command A to select all, and I can go to File, Export, and that'll be the same thing as hitting Shift, Command E, which I'm really big into hotkeys. So, And what I'll do here is I'll, I'll put the photos, I'll send my edited photos back into the same folder as the original photos. I'll put in a subfolder edit so I can keep my raw and my edited images separated. Um, you can rename it to, you can set a custom or take it off and it'll just rename them however. So, uh, image format, JPEG, you have different options on how you want to save it. I save it in Adobe RBG and then my quality, you can change your quality. Obviously the less quality, the smaller the image. I just save it in a hundred percent, in a hundred percent on the quality. I don't limit the file size to anything. I never have, I don't ever think I ever will. I don't. Maybe if I need to save a thumbnail, I can limit it to like two megabits. And then from this point, I'll just hit export. And since I already have them saved, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit overwrite. If I was trying different edits and I was saving them over and over, I could use use unique names and it'll change the name up for me. So once these are edited, they'll get exported. And then from there, you can transfer them, post them on Instagram, transfer them back to your phone, upload them to Dropbox or Google Drive, whatever it is that you use. 
And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, follow me on Instagram at Tanner Garcia Photo. I hope to see you guys next week when I bring you another tutorial. Peace. I need something from you. And I need something new. Oh, I got things to prove to you. And I know what to do. Oh.